And I'd like to welcome back now Mark Rimondi of ESPN fame. Mark, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if there's a way to talk about Conor McGregor uh, <laughs> while talking MMA, you take it. And I'm going to start right there before I get to the actual fight that I want to talk about. He's going at um, Dustin Poirier in a way that feels out of bounds, right? Like you're talking about someone's wife and you're, you know, and that kind of stuff. And yet that is part of Connor's appeal that you, you get this reality TV feeling from like, you can't go there. And then he goes there and he's been doing that his whole career. What are your thoughts about his latest salvo? Yeah, it's, it's a good question because I felt like uh, there were some lines crossed leading into the fight against Dustin Poirier. And then, of course, we know what happened at the end of the fight where McGregor broke his leg. Fight was over. Poirier won by TKO. And, and McGregor continued with that with that narrative that Poirier's wife, uh, you know, Jolie, is in his DMs, you know, is messaging him on Instagram. Uh, I'm sure that's not actually the case. Uh, but he continued with that narrative, and he, and he continued with the trash talk even after the fight, which is unusual, right, Max? I mean, a lot of this stuff is done to promote the fight, to pop a big buy rate on pay-per-view. But when the fight is over, usually, usually things kind of simmer down, right? They simmer down, and they stop talking trash, and they're respectful. Well, that didn't happen, and uh, it's continuing. McGregor is on, tw- on Twitter. He's tweeting very similar things about Dustin Poirier and his wife, and we're talking about that was that that fight was six weeks ago already, and, and McGregor's still going. He's still here in L.A., not far from me, uh, in Beverly Hills, rehabbing his, his leg, but he's still on his uh, on his Twitter game, uh, tweeting about Poirier. So it's uh, it, I don't really know what to make of it, but but to your point, you're right. People do seem to respond to that crossing the line. People do almost like to see it uh, for whatever reason they do. Mark, I think. Connor is a marketing genius. And you know when you can be um, gracious in defeat? When there are more avenues to you, you know, open to you. But in this case, the break of his leg was, in my view, and I said it at the time, a lucky break, so to speak, because there's a built-in reason why he lost. Not to the better man, claims Connor, and many of his fans will agree with him, of course. Um, but because of this, if only not for my broken leg, um, I, I could have won the fight. And then it's not so easy to be gracious because you haven't beaten a significant fighter, apologies to Cowboy Cerrone, in a while. It's been a really kind of long while. So it's harder to be gracious in defeat, and it also doesn't make as much business sense. Here I am talking about Connor. You know, before uh, Cannoneer and uh, Gastelum, which I, I thought Cannoneer was good, I think that... Um, He's probably going to have to wait for a shot at Adesanya. I, I would assume you would agree with that. But he seems like a guy that Adesanya's wanted to fight. He seems like the kind of fighter that I think people hope will continue to win because it's something new and fresh in the division. Your thoughts on his win against Gastelum and how long he's going to have to wait? You're right. Adesanya does want to fight Cannonier because it's a fresh opponent. I mean, Adesanya's next opponent now is going to be Robert Whitaker, and it's a guy that he already beat. He already knocked But who out also already beat Cannonier not that long ago. And Whitaker beat Cannonier, yeah, of course. So I think I think Adesanya, he even said it last year. He said he 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 was hoping for for Cannonier to win that fight against Whitaker. So he would have a fresh opponent. That didn't happen. Whitaker beat Cannonier, and here we are. Yeah. But Cannonier is still right there. Uh, to me, he's right there behind Whitaker. Whitaker is obviously the first guy he has to get that shot next. He beat Cannoneer, of course. And then the other the other question will be this fight coming up September 4th between Darren Till and Derek Brunson. I could see maybe Cannoneer having to fight and beat the winner the of winner, that fight right. in order to get Adesanya next. And Darren Till is also a guy that Adesanya would be very excited to fight. So the good news is for Adesanya is that there are some fresh matchups coming his way. The bad news is that they may take a little bit longer than he than he would have liked to get there. Yeah, and in Cannoneer's case, it is interesting. Like you started at the heavy, you know, heavy, and then you move down, and then down the middle, and you, now you get on a roll. And a lot of times it happens the other way, right? A guy's artificially keeping himself light, then he then he moves up, and he's not killing himself to make weight anymore. He can get on a little roll, and in this case. I guess with you know better discipline, you wind up on a roll, but still there's a hill to climb before you get the title shot, probably if you're Cannoneer. Where are you heading tomorrow? Well, I'm heading to beautiful Cleveland, Ohio for 
the Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley boxing match on Sunday. Uh, why are you going there, Mark? Why, are, <laughs> why is that an important event to cover in your, in your view? I mean, that, that is an important event to cover because it seems like there is a new genre of combat sports that, is, that has popped up in the last year. Uh, I like to say novelty boxing. These novelty boxing matches between celebrities, YouTubers, uh, people who are famous in another area of entertainment, and they've taken their, you know, they've taken their wares uh, and their skills over to prize fighting. And Jay Paul is the number one guy right now in that world, and he's winning fights. You could say he's not beating boxers. That's not wrong, but he does have a very interesting challenge. <laughs> looking at him on Sunday, and Tyron Woodley former UFC welterweight champion, a guy that a guy that could actually hurt Jake Paul, which Ben Askren, his last opponent, could not. No matter how that fight was going to go, even if Askren won, he was never going to hurt Jake Paul with his hands. Tyron Woodley is the kind of guy that can hurt you with his hands. He's done it before. He's knocked out several opponents. He, he knocked out Rob Zoller to win the UFC welterweight title. So it's an interesting fight. And, and the most important thing, Max, is that a lot of people are interested in the fight. And Look, that's why I, I'm going, because there is a lot of interest. Uh, look, I'll say this. The reason you get these celebrity boxing fights is because in, in MMA, UFC has a dominant market position, partly because they can control labor costs. They can create a large middle class, but that means you cap the upper tier earners. Unlike boxing, where guys are a lot of times going fight to fight as independent contractors or several fights. It's not, the contracts aren't always that long. And so there aren't the same labor control costs, right? Like cost controls. So guys can get super rich in a one-off event, right? That's why. Well, why boxing? Why not the octagon? Like, that's why it seems to go in that direction. In Jake Paul's case, it was not clear to me he was going to beat Nate Robinson. I didn't know. Or his another YouTuber. I didn't know that he's going to be Askren. I don't know that he'll beat Tyron Woodley. Like, it's easy to look back and go, well, he's fighting these guys dude, this guy's a YouTuber a couple of years ago. And now he's, you know, putting on the gloves and actually fighting guys. And Tyron Woodley's not a boxer, but he is a... I know his background isn't striking, but he can certainly strike. And he's very experienced in big events and combat sports. And in every event, the question is this. Is there something immediate and urgent about the event that if it's on live right now, you got to be watching it? Does it have that thing or not? It's got it. <laughs> For whatever the formula is, it's got it. Mark Rimondi is going. I'll be watching. Mark, thanks a million for joining me as always. My pleasure, Max. Thanks, man. See you soon. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.